They usually speak like a little bit slower. They have like a sing-sang in their voice. It's adorable. It's cute. <laughs> oh no, I didn't know that that was the level that this video was gonna go. Male genitalia is what that word was. Boozy. Fufitriski. I'm practicing. It's just a bunch of sexually related words. I don't know if I could put that on my channel. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. And it's time for another language reaction video. Last year I did a few videos where I reacted to German dialects that are spoken in the US, such as Pennsylvania Dutch and Texas German. And I also reacted to Yiddish, which of course doesn't count as a German dialect and it's actually spoken all over the world, but it is related to German. And I wanted to see how much I, as a German from Germany, can understand of those languages. So in case you missed those videos and you wanna see how much you would understand, I'll put all of the links for you up here and in the info box. And I asked you on Instagram, which language slash German dialect you want me to react to next. And the winner was... You already know it from the title, Swiss German. So a dialect that is literally spoken right next to Germany. This is Germany right here and this is Switzerland. But despite the proximity, Swiss German is actually very hard to understand for Germans, so we'll see how I'll do today. But first, what do we need to know about Swiss German? Schweizerdeutsch, as it's called by the locals, or Schweizerdeutsch in standard German, describes a group of Alemannic dialects that are spoken in the Deutschschweiz, as we say, the German-speaking part of Switzerland. Yes, even though Switzerland only has about 9 million people, it actually has four official languages, German, French, Italian, and Romanche, or Rito Romanisch in German, and each of these languages is predominant in certain regions of the country. Swiss German is, as I said, an umbrella term for the dialects that are spoken in the German part of Switzerland, and they go back to the Germanic tribe of the Alemanni that settled in the regions of what today goes from southwest Germany to Switzerland to Vorarlberg and the Alsace region around the years 260 to 500 AD. The Alemannic dialects are actually related to the medieval language of Middle High German that was spoken around the 11th to 14th century. When Middle High German then started developing into what is called Early New High German, the Alemannic dialects actually didn't make that change, which is why to this day Swiss German still uses the same sounds that were used in Middle High German. Other Alemannic dialects that are still spoken to this day include Swabian, which is spoken in Baden-Württemberg and parts of Bavaria, as well as the dialects that are spoken in Vorarlberg, so in the western part of Austria, Liechtenstein, that's the only country that's completely immersed in the Alemannic region, by the way, in northwestern Italy, as well as in the Alsace region of France. While in Germany and the Alsace, for example, those dialects are only spoken by some of the people and only in certain, usually more informal situations, Swiss German is spoken in pretty much all situations of daily life and across all socioeconomic classes. In fact, it's actually been experiencing a revival over the last few decades after standard German had become predominant in written language and official documents throughout the 18th century. But since the 1960s, Swiss German dialects have been reintroduced into many areas of life that used to be dominated by standard German, and it's being celebrated and valued as an important part of Swiss identity. In the 1980s, it even found its way into mass media, like radio, TV, and pop music, and with the rise of cell phones and the internet, people started writing messages in their dialect even though there are no standardized spelling rules, so everyone just makes up their own. At the same time, it also seems like due to the internet and mass media, the differences in the dialects are being more and more blurred and they're being influenced by standard German and English born. The differences between standard German and Swiss German can be found in grammar, vocab, phonology, so pronunciation, and orthography, so spelling. In Switzerland, they don't use this letter, for example, the SZ letter. Instead, they usually just use a double S. They also use these quotation marks instead of these ones that we use in Germany. You'll hear a lot of guttural sounds like in Swiss German, a lot of rolled R's, and a lot of words that have the diminutive suffix li added. So what we would call a Zug is a Zugli in Swiss German, and they also rarely use the German dative case. So instead of 
saying trotz des Wetters, they would say trotz dem Wetter. These are just some of the differences, but as I mentioned earlier, even within Swiss German, you can differentiate between Berndeutsch, Zürichdeutsch, Baseldeutsch, Bündnerdeutsch, Waliserdeutsch, and countless more. And even within those categories, there are many, many more dialect variations. Yet, with very few exceptions of secluded villages, Swiss people can usually understand each other just fine. And they speak standard German as well, since it's their official language that is used in writing, like official documents or newspapers. So students learn standard German in school, basically as a second language. But even Swiss standard German still has a few differences from the German standard German. By the way, if you want to learn a language or improve your language skills, but you're tired of boring textbooks and are struggling to stay motivated, why don't you just learn a language while watching your favorite show? Sounds too too good to be true? Well, LingoPi makes it come true. With thousands of hours of TV shows and movies, you can learn real-life language, including colloquialisms and slang. And it's not just watching something and somehow trying to follow along. LingoPi has all the tools you need to make sure that you even understand the quick mumbly parts and, most importantly, that you actually make progress and improve your language skills. They have content in nine different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, Portuguese, Japanese, Korean, English, and of course German, and they add new content every week. If you look at the German selection, you'll see that they have everything from crime shows like Soko Hamburg, to comedy, to cooking shows, documentaries, and even classic kid shows like Die Pfefferkörner are available. That's a show that every German by generation and after watched growing up. Now, while you're watching, you can adjust the speed, which can be very important when you're still learning a language, because natives often speak way too fast. You can see your subtitles, of course, both in the original language and in English. And if you don't understand something, you can just click on the word to see the translation and even add it to your personal word list if you want to, that you can then practice with afterwards. Here, you can review your flashcards, play a pop quiz, or play Wordmaster to make sure that you really add these expressions to your vocabulary. You can also enable this script view on the side while you're watching. I personally find that really, really handy because sometimes the subtitles are just too quick, and this way you can see everything that was said before and after at one site. If there's one sentence that you'd like to listen to more thoroughly, you can activate the loop, and you can even practice your own speaking skills with this feature. One of my biggest breakthroughs learning English was when I started watching How I Met Your Mother in English as a teenager, because I didn't want to wait until the new episodes came out in German. So believe me when I say that movies and TV shows are one of the best ways to get that authentic language input. And I wish I'd had all of these features at the time. And the best part is that with my link in the info box below, you'll get a seven day free trial for LingoPie. And if you decide to continue using LingoPie, you'll even get 55% off. With that, let's look at the videos that I found on YouTube of people speaking Swiss German and we'll see see how much I can actually understand and how much you guys can understand. Now, of course, compared to the other languages I've reacted to before, I've actually heard a pretty decent amount of Swiss German in my life just because they are our neighbors and you just get in touch with it naturally. Okay, so as always, I have my laptop right here. That's where I'll be watching. You'll see everything on your screen, obviously. And the first video that I looked up, and I have to remove my little paper here and I'll tell you why in a second, um, is Speaking Swiss German in Zürich by Easy German. Easy German is an amazing channel in general, by the way. So this one has subtitles. All of their videos, I think, have subtitles in the video. So what I'm doing is I am using my little cheat paper and, well, the opposite of that, actually. And I'm covering up the subtitles on my screen so that I can test myself a little bit better. But you guys will still see them, of course. If you don't want to see them either, just like cover them up with your hand or something so that you can actually test yourself. And with that, let's see. Salut, Summer. Viele liebe Grüße aus Zürich in der Schweiz. Zürich in der Schweiz. Heute aus Zürich in der Schweiz und bei uns sind klar. Okay, so I have to interrupt already for the first time because I know that to many German Swiss German sounds a little cute. Like it's adorable. It's cute. It's I don't know why. It's I think the diminutive form that they use a lot. It's the way that they speak. And so I just want to let you know disclaimer that when I do kind of imitate it because I find it very heartwarming. Like it's just it sounds cool. I don't mean to make fun of Swiss German. Obviously, it's a real language, it's a real dialect that people use also in serious situation, and it's not just cute, of course, but it's also cute. Like, that's the thing. It's like how French just sounds pretty. Swiss German does sound cute, but I still respect the language. I just want to let you guys know that I am not making fun of Swiss German in this video, okay? Deutschlehrer 
Und wir sind diese Woche eingeladen worden von der Hallo Deutsch Schule hier in Zürich. Und wir wollen euch heute mal zeigen, wie in Zürich das Schweizerdeutsch gesprochen wird. Deswegen gehen wir jetzt hier auf die Straße und ihr werdet gleich das Schweizerdeutsch und speziell den Zürcher Dialekt hören mit einer ganz einfachen Frage, nämlich Was hast du heute gefrühstückt? Mal sehen, wie viel ihr davon versteht. So now we're gonna Los find geht's. out what people in Zürich eat for breakfast. I like the music. Was haben die heute Morgen zum Morgen gehabt? Zum Morgen hatte ich ein Kaffee und das war alles. Okay. Und nicht zum Ohne Essen? Kaffee? Nein, nie. Nein, nein. <lacht> Wir haben zusammen Birkermüsli gegessen. Das ist sehr gesund. Und essen Sie das immer zum Morgen? Ja, am liebsten. Wenn ich zum Morgen ist sehr. Ja. Müsli ist ein Term für German Cereal, by the way. It typically includes different types of oats and can have like raisins, nuts and other things. And she said she eats Birchermüsli, which is actually something that Switzerland is known for. Birchermüsli is really, really good. I personally love it. And it's basically just like an oatmeal dish with lots of oats and fruits. And I think it's supposed to soak in milk or I don't know if it's water, but I think it's milk for a pretty long time. So everything's just like, yeah, it's kind of like overnight oats with a bunch of stuff in it. Und es ist sehr gut. Ein Snapdragon mit äh, so Crunchy Müsli. <lacht> Und was hast du gehabt? Ein Smoothie. <lacht> okay, wow, sehr gesund. Das ist so cool. Ich meine, natürlich ist es das gleiche in German, oder? Right? Aber like, wenn sie sprechen Swiss-German Dialekt sprechen, und dann suddenly es einfach nur ein englisches Wort English word. Crunchy. Was hat sie gesagt? Crunchy? Müsli oder so etwas? Und dann die andere Frau sagt Smoothie. Just perfectly English. Nur ein Smoothie, nichts nicht dazu. Ein Toast. Ein Toast. <lacht> Zwei Gipfel und einen Orangensaft. Zwei was? Das Zwei Gipfeli und einen Orangensaft. Und das Gipfeli? I, okay, for some reason, my first association for that word is, um, uh, what are they called? Vanille Kipfel? Uh, Christmas cookies that have this, like, horn shape. I'll show you a picture. I don't know what that would be for breakfast, honestly. Sie ist so normal. Ja, jeden Tag. Jeden Tag. Maybe like a Hörnchen. Maybe like a croissant kind of thing. Ja. Und wenn sie mal so ein bisschen ausgiebiger können zu mögeln, was Dann ist das? Dann ein Topf. Ja. Mit was? Ne? Äh, mit Gumfi, mit äh, Butter. Ein Zopf? Schön gemütlich an einem Sonntagmorgen. Oh, ich habe Müsli. Gehabt. Of course, I do know what a Zopf is. I just reacted to that a little bit weirdly. Um, it's basically a pastry that is braided, basically. Most of the time, I think it's like a yeast based pastry, but I mean, we also have like Laugenzopf, which is like a pretzel. Zopf braided pretzel thingy. Um, the reason why I was a little bit surprised by that is that in my mind those things are usually pretty big and it's not really something that I know as a breakfast food but maybe they have smaller ones or it, she just meant that she had a slice of it for breakfast. I don't know but that's what a Zopf is. That's a term that Germans totally understand so just wanted to clarify that. Frische Frucht. Frucht. Oh, das ist sehr gesund. Tönt Sie immer so gesund zum Morgen essen? Ja, immer. Okay, so obviously, if you don't understand anything, this is kind of just a bunch of interesting words put together. I want to give you a first little update of how much I can understand. I would say with this easy topic, which is obviously like a beginner topic, like what did you have for breakfast? It's all just food terms. Um, I'd say I understand definitely more than half. Um, I noticed that they say something funny for Instead of what did you have for breakfast in German, you would say, was hast du gefrühstückt? They use the word morgen, so morning in the verb. I gotta listen again how they say it. Das Konfibrot. Okay, und nur das Konfibrot, haben Sie etwas dazu getrunken? Ein Kaffee. What kind of bread? Und wie trinken Sie Ihren Kaffee? Äh, mit Milch. Ein Brötchen. Brötchen. Ja, und du? Äh, ja, auch Brot. Butterbrot und äh, Hummus. Okay. Das klingt jetzt ein bisschen nach ein wenig Brötchen. Warum nicht mehr? Ich bin meistens ein Mensch, der morgen nicht essen kann. Also ich meistens Müsli. So, ja, It's normal so funny, because in so many ways it does sound like Swabian, like the way that they say sh instead of s, like ish, or what did they say earlier, toast. Um, we're like in standard German and we would pronounce it as an S, but in Swabian too, they pronounce it as a sh sound and they do that too. But then there's like one sentence that just sounds straight out of Swabian and then the next sentence is like completely different again. Ich Müsli. Ich esse das Acai Bowl. Acai Bowl. Ich habe nicht zum Morgen gegessen. Okay, hat das einen bestimmten Grund, warum du nicht zum Morgen gegessen hast? Äh, ich... Morgen gegessen. 
Is that how they said it? I don't know if I said that correctly, but basically eat something for morning or morning meal. I don't know, that's definitely a different way of saying um, having breakfast than we do in standard German. In standard German, honestly, and I don't know if this was a verb in Swiss German too, but in standard German, having breakfast is actually its own verb, which I think is cooler than in English. Gefrühstückt or frühstücken as it would be the infinitive form is its own verb, breakfasting. English can learn something from us. I had heute zum Morgen had einen Äpfel. Nur ein Äpfel? Ja, ein Äpfel. Ein Äpfel. Hat das einen Grund? Ja, das Reason. hat einen Grund. Für mich hat es einen. Eben, spezielle Diät. Ist An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Ja, gesagt. Nicht. Warum nicht? Weil ich nicht. nichts morgen ist. Okay, nichts is nothing. Selleriesaft. Mm, that's Selleriesaft healthy. Ist das immer so? Nein, aber ich mache im Moment so eine Entschlackungskur. Was? Entschlackungskur? That sounded like very honestly. The way that she said, um, like cleansing, or what would be the English term? Entschlackungskur is the standard German word that she was saying. The way that she said it, it sounded a lot more like what it actually is. It sounded a little bit more nasty. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, a yogurt, an apple and berry. Oh, das tönt sehr gesund. Tun eigentlich immer so gesundes Morgen essen? Yeah, That's so thank you. cute! Berries are just berry. By the way, this is actually a topic that I wanted to talk about too here soon and I put that in one of my topic polls recently. I want to make a video about what Germans eat for breakfast. Is that something you guys are interested in? If so, let me know in the comments. I actually got more um, votes for that topic than I expected, so I think this might be interesting for people. Immer das gleiche, ungefähr, ja. Gar nicht. Gar nicht. Und du, was hast du gehabt? Ein Kaffee und Wasser. Okay. Ist das immer das, was du zum Morgen hast? Ja, ja morgen mag ich nicht essen. Also, okay. liebst mich Kaffee. Am Wochenende ist das auch so? Ähm, ja, als erste, wo ich Eis. Also, Eis. Blöd gesagt, so auf der 12 gibt es mal etwas rechts für dich. Aber... That is me. I don't eat breakfast and I don't usually eat until like lunchtime and sometimes even evening like sometimes the first time I eat is 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. depends on what kind of day I'm having but I don't usually eat before like noon so that is 100% me let me know what your guys's breakfast um, habits are you can put that in the comments as well and I'm also of course wondering how much you're already understanding I can definitely understand a good amount but there's also words that I haven't really been able to understand or I definitely wouldn't be able to repeat them after what they said. Okay. okay, let's move on to the next video. This one is from the channel Wikitanks, which we are familiar with because every single video that I've done in this format, I have had at least one video from Wikitanks because they just basically record people speaking their dialect or language, which is awesome. There's no real explanation or, you know, crazy vocab translations or anything like that. It's just capturing how people talk, which I love. And this one is Fabia speaking Swiss German. Again, I'll have the subtitles on for you guys, but not for me. Hallo zusammen, grüß miteinander. Ich bin Fabia und vom Magazin, das ist ein Arbeitsplatz okay. vom Schweizerischen Körlosenbund. Ich schaffe es der Schweizerische Körwasserbund? Something Wasserbund. Meep. Completely wrong, Feli. Um, so far so good. They're at her workplace. Kurz und da, und das ist sehr spannende Arbeit. Sie haben da mit Gehörlos zu tun und lernen Gebärdensprache. In meiner Freizeit äh, gehe ich sehr gerne schwimmen und gerne joggen und ich gehe auch tanzen. Ich mache einen Salsa-Kurs. That's all easy to understand. Ich bin aus Zürich von der Schweiz. Okay, so another dialect from Zürich. So I guess we need to um, get a little bit more variety in here. So far it's only been Zürich. Sie haben verschiedene Dialekte und ich, ich erzähle noch ein paar ähm, einzelne Begriffe, die jetzt in meinem Ortsschatz einfach speziell sind oder wo, wo vielleicht auch von der Familie her so entstanden sind. Ähm, das eine ist das Bütschki. Und zwar ist das Bütschki? von einem Äpfel der Kern innen drin. Ah. Und ich habe gedacht, das ist einfach ein spezielles Wort, weil andere Kantone sagen dem wieder anders. Das andere wäre der Ahoy. That's really cool because you know how even in English, like within the US even, but also with other English speaking countries, but also within German, there's these certain words that you always ask people, what do you call that? What do you call this? For example, in Germany, you'll always, I think that might even be one of the words, but I I don't even know. The standard German word is Apfelputzen. Meep. Turns out that's also just what we call it in my region. But another word uh, that people always ask about is, what do you call the end of a loaf of bread? Because in Bavaria, it's Scherzel or Scherzel, but 
where I'm from, we usually say Scherzal. And in the US, for example, people always ask, what do you call drinks like Coke or Sprite? Some people say soda, some people say pop. Um, what do you call the shoes that you're wearing? Sneakers, gym shoes, tennis shoes. Uh, there's a few more of those words, but that's what she's currently doing. Heul, und das ist vom Brot, ganz am Ende, das, was noch übrig bleibt. Oder wenn wir das Kind in die Süßigkeiten kaufen, dann haben wir das andere Werte Aheul. Und das ist vom Ahoyl. Brot, ganz am Ende, das, was noch übrig bleibt. Oder wenn wir als Kind in die Süßigkeiten kaufen, dann haben wir dem Kremle gesagt. What was the last part? I gotta look, watch that again. I'm still lost. Is that the verb that they call buying candy? They have their own verb for that? I mean, if that's the case, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, next up, and this is really funny. I just typed in like Swiss German in YouTube, and this is one of the clips that came up. It literally looks like a potato. I don't know how old this is. Maybe we can all guess how old this is based on the fashion she's wearing. Um, but yeah, it's awful quality, but I thought it was hilarious because it's literally just a weather forecast, like a weather report. Um, this time, honestly, I think I'm gonna turn off the subtitles for you guys too, because, you know, it's just weather. You can, you can guess along too. Okay, let's go. Grüezi miteinander und herzlich willkommen zu Ihrem Schweizwetter. Die heutige Nacht die startet sternenklar, später ziehen dann vom Nordwesten her ein paar dünne Wolkenfelder an. Es bleibt aber überall okay. trocken, in ein paar Tagen so far könnte everything. es allerdings örtlich zu Nebel kommen. Die Tiefstwerte liegen mm -hmm. bei rund 14 bis 10 Grad. In Graubünden kommen wir der 0 Grad Grenze schon gefährlich nach. Bei 2 Grad wird es schon richtig zapfig. Der Sonntag der startet dann stellenweise mit dicken Nebelfeldern. Die lösen sich dann aber peu à peu auf und strahlen. Der Sonnenschein wartet auf uns. Die paar dünnen Schleierwolken die trüben uns ein Glück kein Stück. Am Nachmittag werden die hohen Wolkenfelder dann langsam dichter. Zwischen Basel und Basel sind die Nachmittag Wolkenfelder dann langsam Schleierwolken die trüben uns ein Glück kein Stück. Am Nachmittag werden die hohen Wolkenfelder dann langsam dichter. Zwischen Basel und Genf bilden That part, I did not understand what's happening in the afternoon. Es sich dann gegen den Abend langsam Quellwolken, wo die ersten Schauer und Gewitter geben. Okay. Die Temperaturen die steigen auf First 17 Grad and in St. Moritz und sogar 24 Grad rund um Lugano. Am Montag fließt dann zwischen einem Hoch über dem Atlantik und einem Tief über Nordeuropa kühlere und feuchte Luft zu uns. Aber das ist sicher nur eine kurze Unterbrechung, alles Liebe. What? What was that? That's sicher nur what? Es die Luft zu uns. Aber das ist sicher nur eine kurze Unterbrechung, alles Liebe. I did not understand that. Das ist sicher nur der Hurzi? What is it? Okay, now I gotta turn on that sub the subtitles. Aber das ist sicher nur eine kurze Unterbrechung, alles Liebe. Even the subtitles didn't really get that. Um, I think maybe she said that's just a quick interruption if the subtitles captured that correctly. That could kind of be the case. I wish they had told us where she was from because I don't know if she sounded very different, but I felt like in this video you could hear the much more. Like there was a lot of sounds like might not sound the most pleasing depending on like what you consider pleasing. Um, her fashion, okay. My guess is that that was like 2008. 2000 eight or nine. I, okay, I'm gonna go with 2008. What do you guys think? When was that fashion from? When was this report from? I don't know if we can find out. Okay, it was uploaded in 2022, so that doesn't really help us. I wonder if we can find out when this was from. If you have any clue, um, let me know in the comments because I would be very curious. I also came this other weather report that's much newer and I don't want to watch the whole thing again. I just want to watch the beginning real quick because it had an ad and I thought it was amazing. Unschlagbare Angebot bei jedem Wetter. Bei der Autocenter Zürich Süd AG in Adlischwil, der Binelli und Ersam AG und der Titan AG in Zürich. Um, obviously my hometown represented BMW commercial on Swiss TV BMW okay next up uh, we got an actual YouTube video by a youtuber a Swiss youtuber called Adi Totoro Adi 
Adi Tutoro. I uh, had never heard of him before this. I apologize, um, but I think he's really funny. He's really cool. And he has two videos where he has German content creators guess Swiss words, and we're gonna guess along a little bit. Hörst du raus, wenn ich Hochdeutsch rede, dass ich Schweizer bin? Ja. Krass. Ja. Scheiße. Okay. Das ist he's asking him if he can tell when he speaks standard German, when the Swiss guy speaks standard German. That's the Swiss guy is the one on the left. Um, if the German guy can tell that he's Swiss, and the German guy Dave said yes, you can definitely kind of hear it. And I agree. They usually speak like a little bit slower. They have like a sing sang in their voice. They almost like over pronounce certain things a little bit more than we do in German. In German, German, standard German. Ja, so mü. <lacht> Sehr gut. Und man merkt, dass du die Mühe gibst. Mhm. Es ist weniger, dass du es nicht richtig machst, aber man merkt, dass es ein bisschen angestrengt ist. Scheiße, Digga. Warst du schon mal in der Schweiz? Ja, es ist ein Traum. Wo warst du? Have you ever äh, been to Switzerland? Davos. Ja, das Where'd da, wo es Genau. Ja. Ich werde dir jetzt wörter uh, I went, uh, um, yeah. Oh, where there was snow? Uh, yeah, ja, exactly. <lacht> okay, first word. Ist so ist Jemand, der... So, that... I would read that schnabby, but I think he said like schnabby more. But I've, I definitely noticed that there's a lot of umlauts in Swiss German. So my first guess would be just schnabel, like a beat of a bird. That's what that looks like Freches to me. Mundwerk hat. Da muss ich dir sagen, nein. Okay. Kann ich das anpacken? Ja. Okay. <lacht> ja, ja. Oh. Das kannst du sehr gut Dann anpacken. Dann ist es ein Schwanz. Ja, es ist ein Schwanz. Oh, no. <lacht> ja, okay. Echt ein Schnabel. Oh, oh, no, I didn't know that that was the level that this video was gonna go. Ah, uh, okay, cool. It's a uh, male genitalia is what that word was. Well, let's see how this video also, keeps going. Schniedel. Yeah. Hm, I apologize. I don't know if yeah. I could put Busy. that on my channel. Nee, mehr so, mehr so Büsi. 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 Die Deutschen reden Büsi. die Schweizer natürlich immer so hart. Du bist Büsi. Aber es ist nicht Büsi, Büsi. Food. So, das ist okay, mega uh, since we had that first word, I would guess that this word Büsi might mean like a woman's breast, chest, Busen. That would be my best Ach, guess. Von wo kommt Foot? Äh, 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 gibt's nicht sowas? Nee. Nicht? Es sind Brüste. Nee. Es ist der Bauch. See this? That was my guess. Es ist lebendig. Es ist ein lebendiges okay, so, Lebewesen. Ah ja? Es ist ein Tier. It's es a living könnte creature. Durchaus, ähm, sein. It's an animal. Du willst es rausfinden. Es gibt viele Büsse hier in Köln. Raupen. <lacht> <lacht> ja, ja, die habe ich alle gesehen in Köln, die Raupen. I don't know. Uh, Büsi. Um, some kind of insect, maybe? Like a beetle. <lacht> I don't know. Jeder zweite hat zu Hause ein Büsi. Nun? Nee. Eine Katze. Ja! Echt? Ja. Okay. Ist Büsi. Also Büsi. Really? Büsi, Büsi. Okay, so Büsi is a cat in standard German Katze, Swiss German Büsi. So as you can tell, literally not related whatsoever. Das könntest du wissen. Trottoir. Ja, nee, du weißt es. Okay, du bist... Je suis trottoir. Du weißt, was trottoir ist, oder? Nein, ich weiß es nicht. Nee, ich bin trottoir. Du bist Ah, man, I should know that. Auf dem Trottoir kann man sein. Auf dem Berg. Ah, man. Nee, Motorrad. Ja, du kannst mit dem Motorrad auf dem Trottoir sein. I don't know what that was. Ja. I did have ja. six years ja. of French. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sidewalk. And this is actually something that's interesting to mention too, because of course, because of all the different languages in Switzerland, there's also influences from other languages, like French in this case, for example. We also had the other guy earlier in the Easy German video um, say hello with salut, which is also more like a French greeting, right? The most typical Swiss German greeting is grüzi, which I think they also only say in some parts of Switzerland, because as we learned, the dialects are so different everywhere. And then of course there's also some influence from Italian as well. Wirklich krass. Gumpe. Gumpe. Mhm. Ich wollte als erstes okay. Kumpel sagen, aber das ist es nicht. Gumpe ist, hat auch was mit... That I think I know from the Pennsylvania Dutch video. Because as we learned in that video, Pennsylvania Dutch is also partly influenced by Swiss German among other influences. And I'm pretty sure that I ha I don't know if that made the final cut of the video. I don't remember right now. But I, I think that that was a part of the Pennsylvania Dutch video that I watched and I think that it was related to the English word to jump. I think it means springen, hüpfen, so to jump. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> or it's something completely different. This is gegorener Pflaumenmus. It can't be a noun because it's lowercase. So in case you didn't know, in German all nouns, not just proper nouns as you have them in English, but all nouns are capitalized. Skifahrer machen das, aber auch Fußballer und auch Frösche. Spring! Ja. Okay, Echt? yes. Ja. Du bist yes. ein stolzer Besitzer von dem. Nasebuck. Nee, Look Nase. at all of those double vowels and double umlauts. Bück. It's crazy. Nasebuck. Nee, nee, nee. Du bist mehr so Nasebuck. Der ist noch ein bisschen zu anders. Nasebuck. Nase, Nase. Okay, my first guess honestly would be Naseborn. Like picking your nose. But... Ist man in Deutsch angestellt? Ja, it's capitalized, nee. so it du has to be a noun. Bück? Ich bin einer. Nee, du hast einen. Achso. Vielleicht auf zwei oder Popel. drei. Ja. Ah, ja. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, I was super close. I don't know why I didn't make that connection. Um, Nasebug is a Popel, aka a booger 
in English. Okay, this video definitely has a great level, gutes Niveau, but let's move on because I found this other video by Easy German again. And because I said earlier, I felt like we heard a lot of Zurich Deutsch and I'm not quite sure where this YouTuber, Adi Totoro, is that how he, yeah. I don't know where he's from. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'll put it right here. Um, but I mean, he only gave us a few single words anyways. It wasn't like a whole sentence. So I thought this video would be perfect where we can hear five different Swiss German dialects. And I gotta get my little cheat sheet again. Well, to cover up the subtitles. Guten Abend, ich heiße Francesca, ich bin 40, ich komme aus St. Gallen und rede St. Galler Deutsch. Okay. Guten Abend, ich heiße Fabian, ich bin 28 Jahre alt. Ich komme aus Gutet Fäschel und ich rede Walliser Deutsch. Okay, also Hallo zusammen, ich bin der Nino, ich bin 29, ich komme aus Zürich und ich rede Zürich Deutsch. Same age as me. Guten Abend, ich heiße Samuel, ich bin 35, ich komme aus Langenthal im Kanton. 35, 35, 35. Bern und ich rede Deutsch. Guten Abend, ich heiße Andreas, ich bin 35. Ich komme von Chur. He, okay, same age and they did say it differently. Fufi Trisik oder Fufi Triski. Triski. Something like that. You can hear, definitely hear the differences. Was ist dein Beruf? Was ist dein Beruf? Was ist dein Beruf? Was schaffst du? Was schaffst du? Okay, wow. Uh, since I'm not seeing the subtitles, I didn't know what they were saying the first three times. And then once they said, was schaffst du? Then I understood, because that's also something that they do say in Swabian for what do you do for a work? Als Deutschlehrerin. Um, ich arbeite als Architekt. Ich schaffe als Schulleiter. Ich bügle als Deutschlehrer. Ich schaffe als Lehrer. They're all teachers, that's what she said in Wie the intro. Da? I skipped the Wie intro. Wie geht's dir? Wie geht's dir? Wie geht's dir? Wie geht's dir? You can hear the difference in the vowels, like some of them say gates. Um, and they almost say it like as diphthong, kind of a little bit similar to even the northern Germany, but it's not really related at all. Um, and some say wie geht's, so they either make the the E sound to an A sometimes. Gats, or they say the E sound, but a little bit differently. Ja, geht's gut, danke. Mir geht's gut. Mir geht's gut. Mir geht's gut, danke. And some of this is even somewhat related to Bavarian dialect as well, because in Bavarian too you would say gut instead of gut, standard German. Bavarian, gut, like you make it a diphthong. You make it this two sound vowel thing, which they do as well. Mir geht's gut. Was machst du heute Abend noch? Was machst du heute noch? Was machst du heute Abend? Was machst du heute noch? Was machst du heute Abend? Heute Abend gehe ich noch tanzen. Heute gehe ich noch klettern. Heute Abend trinke ich ein Bier in einer Beiz. Heute Abend unterrichte ich noch eine Klasse. Ich muss noch unterrichten und dann trinke ich ein Bier. Das <laughs> Bierli. Wenn ihr Deutsch lernt. Okay, cool. And last but not least, let's go back to another video that this Swiss YouTuber did. And um, he did it with another content creator from Germany, Revi, that I think a lot of people probably know. Um, let's do just like one or two words to round the video up. I know we've been going for a while and I always talk too much anyways. I apologize. Gipfeli. Yeah, this is... Um, Gipfeli. Back. Nee. Das That's ist what I heard back. earlier in the breakfast nee. thing. I think it's a croissant now. Nee. It has to be. Or some kind of pastry. It has spitzen, but it's not a bear. A sege? A art brötchen. Croissant? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it is a croissant. Applause. Thank you. I'll give you a Bro, das Wort ist Nugi. Nugi? Nugi. 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 That sounds cute. Nugi. Ist nichts Schlimmes. I somehow associate like nougat with it. Like, or a little chicken nugget or something like that. But I feel like it's either like candy, like a, I don't know, like a little nougat something. Or Nutella or something like that. Or it's maybe nuggets. Ja, 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 Nugi. Kennst du das in Deutschland? Aber das würde ich jetzt nicht so schreiben. Ich würde mit CK schreiben. What? I missed it. Is it wirklich Nugi? Is it a schnuller? Schnuller. Ja, ja. Okay, yeah. Kennst du das in Deutschland? Aber das würde ich jetzt nicht so schreiben. Ich würde mit CK schreiben, einfach um sicher zu gehen. Gibt es wirklich Nuckel? Ja, den Nuckel. Ha, okay. I um I don't call Schnuller that. I didn't know that that was a thing. Do you guys, if you're if you're German, do you guys call Schnuller that? In English it will be pacifier, passy. Okay, the rest of the video was kind of unter der Gürtellinie, as I would say in German. So I'm not gonna show it, but I'm gonna link it for you if you want to watch it. It's just a bunch of 
sexually related words and terms and colloquialisms, but um, this was a lot of fun. I honestly, usually I would say I can't watch news in Swiss German without seeing the subtitles, right? Which is true, I think, but in terms of like kind of easygoing topics like the weather or breakfast or what are you doing tonight after you get off work? I think um, if I really pay attention, I can definitely understand 90% of what they're saying. There's always a few words here and there that I can't understand, but I would say 90% of everything I understood. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments how much you were able to understand and maybe which words you liked the best or which parts you found most surprising. And also let me know which German dialects or languages you want me to react to next. If you enjoy my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet, activate the notifications. And if you want to support me and my channel, you can do that with the super thanks button underneath or you can join my Patreon community or buy me a coffee on ko-fi.com. This is where you can find me outside of YouTube with additional content. I also have a podcast that comes out bi-weekly called Understanding Train Station. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!